ازشین پروتستان امین مالی
the American studies or African American situation in America. In fact, I really enjoyed it and it deserves, you know, a great appreciation. When I take your work in different parts, in fact, I find it very exhaustive if the, my members can allow me to use the word. Very exhaustive in the sense that you went thoroughly to discover some situations that I wasn't expecting a new, you know, letter like you could do, or these things could have been done by ourselves in writing our articles and all the rest. But I would like you to bear in your mind that you are not only here to, to learn from us, but you are also to give. And if you give me particularly, I'm ready to take. I've already taken so many things over here. But if I would like this document to be used by our future doctors, there are many over here that are waiting for us to finish so that we just dump on your document to take it as a reference or to get inspiration from it. That's the reason why we are obliged to not leave your document to go away without polishing it, without asking you, you know, to go through it. Because Professor Nukwa has said that there are some petty, petty things that need correction and revisit. That's because of his saying, I think I'm, I've got a visa to visit those petty, petty things that will make your document more profitable, not only for us, but for those, you know, who are also uh, coming after you. This pushes me to say that there are so many uh, you know, aspects of your document, or let me say, of your way of doing things, that needs, uh, you know, address. For instance, if you go on, I mean, if you, if you, if you read on page 20, page 20 of your document, I don't know if I'm having the same document as you,
you may revisit them finally. After that, go to page 73. 73. Over there, I don't know if you are with me. Yes. Yeah. Page 73 bears something like this. You will see that when you have dealt with the issue of our separation and integration, separation whether, uh, I mean, blacks should have to pull themselves apart from American society, or they should be integrated in the American. You, you know, you can with it thoroughly, but you couldn't give a conclusion or a point of view. But if you were, you know, somewhere there, could you promote separation or integration? That's not all. So is the theory that binds the mainstream and an ethnic group. See, uh, there's an uh, you call it, uh, a theory or a procedure that makes an ethnic group's culture to be part of American mainstream. I would like you, if you can jump somewhere there, to tell me how an, an, an ethnic group's culture can be part of a, how you call it, the American mainstream. That's my first question. Yeah. Or you ask, can I say this? No one. Because the first one was to revisit the child's reaction on the person's work. Now this is the second one where um, um, I would like you to tell me the procedure through which an ethnic group becomes in a part of the American mainstream. If you want to be the world. Okay. Now let's go to page 83. Now on page 83, we try it. If uh, I'm, uh, on that page, we talk about the Bosnian School of Thought. And over there, you have to talk about um, Ukadi Washington's school of, uh, school of Thought. Um, up to now, Ukadi Washington's ideology is still I mean, critical. We think he was dancing to the rhythm of uh, uh, white music, but he appeared to be struggling for the well-being of uh, African Americans. Do you know of any political achievements during, I mean, Bukati Washington's life or during his struggle? Because a very famous figure of uh, Highland Renaissance, James Weldon, have you ever heard of him? Have you ever heard of his political career? So you have to think about that. Because during, during our recording, um, we got to Washington that he played a political role. He represented the, the US government outside the US. So I'd like you to you know, revisit that also. I'm not going to be very long, but this document is very important in the sense that we need it just after now. If we polish it, I, I will need it. And I'm sure those will come to me for advice, we also need it. So if I will be proud to refer people to that, to that document, let me make it, you know, a very well, I mean, document. If you go to page 159, over there, you try it in 159. Um, you try to talk about a religious handling of uh, slavery. I don't want to keep long on this particular one. What I would like you to do is, are you talking about Arabs or are you talking about Islam? Because what I know about slavery in this particular context is that Arabs enslaved, but Islam free. 
and Islam liberates. I don't know if you get me. Arabs, I say, you know, the people, the population, they have the slavery institution. They, they used to have so many cultural, you know, ideologies. Like worshiping even idols and all the rest, which were, you know, counseled or struggled against by Islam. And among those ideologies was slavery. When you are in the, in the context of Islam, you hear about slavery, but it is in a positive way. For instance, if, let me just give you an example. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot, many people know that Muslims fast during the month of Ramadan. During that month, if a faithful Muslim break or breaks his fasting, he is not sick, he is not traveling, he is not old, he does not forget, he is not a child. You know, if you can, these five conditions, a child is not asked to fast. An old man is not asked to fast. A traveler is not asked to fast. Uh, I call it, uh, a sick person is not asked to fast. Someone who has forgotten is not you know, penalized when he breaks the fast. But if you intentionally does it, I mean, do it. You know the first thing that you have to do to repair your fast? The first thing to do, the first option is to free a slave. To free, a, especially a woman slave. It is in case you cannot find a slave that you fast two months, that means 60 days, without stopping. You consecutively, you, 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 I mean, you fast 60 days. That's another option. You can, if you cannot, then you feed 60 poor people. See, these are you know options. The first one is to free a slave. But there are many cases where Islam always went at freeing a slave, freeing a slave, freeing a slave. So you have to decide whether you know slavery was practiced by Islam or by Arabs. Okay? Um, I think I still have a lot to say, but I will ask you to take this document just afterwards. We see those kinds of things that Professor Nurko has talked about, and we just visit them. And I'm sure that the document will be you know, up to the level of being used by in you know, our future uh, doctorate, why not be our, our, ourselves? So I encourage you, you know, this is the beginning of serious activities. Beginning of serious activities. So I'm sure that if only you are determined, you can make it. As you said, that professor, or my colleague, I would have always told you that you can, since you could, you can also do it. So I'm sure if you put the effort in it, the development will be you know, a reference to all of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Very happy to wish you Thank you very much. You have the long way to go. There are many questions that are not you. Right. What are your answers? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank Professor Larry Lin for his remarks, contributions, and uh, questions. The first uh, remark I will make is a question about the uh, Zodari Hurston not being uh, uh, positively viewed by Richard Rax because uh, she fought for women's emancipation, black women emancipation. Uh, if I may say, I think uh, Richard Wright is right not to like in the beginning of uh, Zorani Hurston's ways, uh, not until the uh, 1960s uh, by uh, Alice Walker, who has revisited her way. And I've seen that actually uh, her way is a good way that should be promoted in, during the Harlem or in the African American literature. 
and he thanked Professor for his uh, remarks. And uh, I hope I will further my research in order to elaborate on this issue. And the second is about uh, ethnic culture, cultural group, part of uh, the American uh, mainstream. What procedure? Uh, when we take uh, African Americans, uh, when we came to America during the era of slavery, uh, after Reconstruction, I think they have started developing a cultural identity. For instance, the jazz, the blues, all these songs uh, made by African American, I think was definitely or were definitely uh, approved by uh, the American mainstream culture. So I think once an individual group uh, promotes his or her culture, once uh, they show to the public or to the American audience that we have something rich which we want to offer, and when that thing is actually rich, I think uh, Amer the American mainstream can start accept uh, what they offer. But I'm, I'm, as I am still uh, a younger scholar, I think uh, after these uh, defects, I will see uh, in camera uh, Professor Larry Lee for better understanding of this concept. The next one is about uh, Washington and uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Actually, I wasn't aware of his political achievement, uh, but as you said, it's now that I've learned, I've come to learn, and I think it, uh, it's a good opportunity for me, and I've learned that. Uh, the next one is about the slavery or enslavement, whether the Arabs have practiced slavery or Islam. So, actually, in my, during my three years of research, I didn't go to that uh, vein. But as you were saying, I'm, I'm learning now that uh, uh, it is actually the Arabs uh, that uh, practice slavery. But say Islam actually frees slavery. So I, I thank Professor for this insightful uh, uh, contribution. Please, Professor, uh, please, Mr. Chairman, uh, I am back, and uh, I don't know whether Professor Larry, I mean, would add anything. Thanks, sir. Well, Yeah, because 
because I needed to understand, you know. I had many friends who happened to be Muslim, but we never covered that ground. So thank you very much. But it is only when you, you know, consciously that. Uh -huh. When someone forgets, you go back. No problem. If it's a child, he says he forgot. Any someone says he No problem. No problem. He passed only one day. Are Muslims allowed to lie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about faithful in a Muslims. <laughs> okay. Well, about the last thing, I would like to remind the candidate that uh, actually Heston was not promoting. Uh, okay, when Heston was read by uh, Richard Wright. He disagreed with her on many points. I would like to say to you, and probably to the panel here, that one key reason is that Zorani Hassan was not promoting black cultures or black culture. She was promoting black female identity. That's the idea that black women didn't have to do things the way black men did. And it's interesting to know that it was during the civil rights movement period that Alice Walker decided to go back to Hurston's book, that book that many black and white male critics rejected. Alice Walker decided to go back and read that book and after reading it, she decided that the Eyes Were Watching God is the best novel she's ever read. So what she sees there is the promotion of black female identity, and which corresponds to what Alice Walker was fighting for, because she's realized that black males during the Black art movement and the civil rights movement were actually fighting for many interests. Only they gave the impression that they are fighting for the whole group, but close scrutiny to what they were doing revealed that they were fighting for black male interests without realizing it. About the Booker T. Washington things, I'm saying, saying this just for the sake of the students. The American League of Students who may be in the audience here. Booker T. Washington, unlike W.B. Du Bois, believed in giving black people in those days a practical education that could help them secure jobs. Booker T. Washington when he was in charge of the Skibi Institute, emphasized practical training programs. He said, black people do not have time to pursue higher education. All they needed upon graduating from primary or maybe secondary school is to learn a trade and quickly get things to do. So he trained many bricklayers, many carpenters, many electricians, all kinds of petty jobs, because that's where the money was back then. And many people later on condemned him for not pushing the black race up. Instead of pushing them up through education, he said, go and learn something quickly and get the job. Is that a bad thing? As far as I'm concerned, I think it was not a bad way of looking at life. He did what he thought was right. And I think at some point in the development of the race, they needed that policy. It was not the policy that was to be pursued at the time of the but at some point, they needed, instead of having them you know, hang around doing nothing. They said, well, the 
construction industry was experiencing a boom. There are plenty of construction sites. He said, those people need people. They need electricians, they need plumbers, they need carpenters, they need bricklayers. Those are the training programs going to put in place within the scheme. And many people graduated from the scheme were able to secure jobs, get married, raise families. They may not become university lecturers, but they were independent, sound people. Thank you, once again, for the lecture. In fact, this has been an opportunity for those who are in the field to take more and more for themselves as more for others. And now I would like to give the floor to the Professor Medina for his assessment. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The first word would be to thank all the members of the assessment board. Uh, thank the authorities of the University of Kuwait for associating with me with this debate.
I like your approach and I like your talk. But uh, I feel somewhat uh, frustrated because you are not doing what you have said you are going to do. In my preliminary report, I said that already. Third paragraph. 
second line. Masters is the capital N. Dr. Arunu, senior lecturer in the capital N. Anything like that? <laughs> I am coming out that because you know that we have got proof right in our people. We have asked friends of yours. Our friends of yours, they have many things here. We have helped uh, you to give us uh, more substantial proof. On the table of Colton page, page 5 of Romania, why don't you phone signs? Chapter 2. That is in the room. Do you see the point? It's chapter 2. The making of the black critical tradition. The following page. The Washington. Sometimes you put the determiner as well. The Washington School of The Washington School of Thank <laughs> you. 
man go back to the fork to take the inspiration from fork literature and art, which the religious and the religious are the religious of the world. And by theorizing the Harlem Renaissance, I don't know who studied the new one, the English, why the Irish Renaissance was uh, in full. So also his ideas from the Irish Renaissance. Then we have uh, the First World War and the World War. What the first world war brought to the fore to the world was gas. The Harlem Renaissance went on the path to what is called the Jesus Age. You know, probably, or have heard of uh, Van Benchen's Nigger Heaven. Thank you. 
nine depression. And that will be the end. Quite the end of the uh, hard depressions. False people continue to produce. But the kind of religion that came to birth after that, you have not spoken of that. You have the proletarian writers. People such as Richard Wright belong to the proletarian tradition. Uncle Tom Chilton, Ladyson, uh, Black Boy, are all belong to the art and weapon school within the black tradition of that time. It is in that context that uh, the book uh, by uh, the one we are discussing.
I must confess that I have not used it fully. So this professor in uh, improvement of the work I will take over of it. They are 
acquiring a new idea of their presence. You know, they are moving from non-entity to entity. So this is a post-colonial move. And then we can have more, you know, the next page on page 8. Second paragraph, as a result, the Harlem Renaissance writers, critics, and intellectuals sought to criticize the way white Americans represent them and criticize their own people who have fallen in the same trap. This again is a key moment when the dissertation is telling us that during the Harlem, Harlem Renaissance, Black people are getting organized to take up the old challenge. You know, people are saying that they're a non-entity, and so far they have accepted that view, but they are now standing tall and seeking to do something about it. This is a metacritical moment. So the whole thing goes through this. And I'm glad they didn't focus on books although we may use some books, some novels, I mean, you know, but the critical statement made by people, criticizing the critical statement made by people about the race and seeking ways of, you know, promoting a new truth from, from black people's perspective. You know, so this study has a very metacritical tone in it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> well, uh, this is an identical stamp. And as you know, uh, what the media said is, we can go on and on discussing the same issue. But I think Dr. Uh, Nurubo has brought something, I don't know that you got it. Uh, he's saying that when he was making his comments, he said, this applies here, this applies there, etc., etc. If these things were done, I think Prof. Medina would not put the question there. So that is, it is something extremely important for those who are here, those who are in the process of writing the dissertation behind it. Well, uh, do you have anything? Yeah. And then um, I will say this uh, to those, not to Mr. Soul, but to those who are in the process of studying for their dissertation. You need to be very, very patient and very, very careful. I usually tell my students that there are two places in human history whereby one nation fought for its independence before getting it, another nation declared before fighting for it. It is very, very advised to properly take the time to proofread the dissertation, to wait for, you know, input of your supervisor before you bring the dissertation to another stage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and members of the jury for your insightful comment and contribution. And as you promised, I wish that after this defense, I'll get in that with you. And I do promise that I'll be closer to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the board. Close that to your supervisors. Yes, sir. 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 Option littérature américaine et a décidé de vous décerner la mention très honorable.
faced face because uh, actually it wasn't easy. I remember that I finished the defense a year ago and uh, the defense could have taken place some time ago but uh, uh, God's ways are not ours and today he has made the defense to happen. So I thank him and I also thank the members of the jury because uh, when I came for this defense I have learned a lot. They've taught me so many things I never knew. So I think it's uh, time for me to thank them all, the members of the jury that chair of the board and all of them and God bless them for all they have done and I equally thank the audience because I wasn't expecting such a big audience but their presence already suggests that uh, I have people behind me who could support me in whatever situation so I thank them all and actually my topic which is a, uh, a metacritical approach to black representation during the Harlem Renaissance and the civil rights era is an important issue because uh, it helps uh, demystify or debunk concepts of uh, stereotypes of black vis-a-vis -vis white and I think it's, uh, it's a good job. So uh, uh, Mr. Cameraman, I thank you for your wonderful job equally because uh, uh, you came on time and you have done it. May God bless you and I think he will reward you and more importantly, uh, I thank my brethren in Christ, they've come, they have supported me in whichever way. So may God bless everybody.